morning, folks. I'm Dave Canterbury with Self Reliance Outfitters in the Pathfinder School, back down here at the Pathfinder Outdoor Classroom. What I thought we'd do today is do a little bit of a cookware comparison by material so that we understand advantages and disadvantages of different types of cookware. I have a cast iron skillet here. In this case, we're talking skillets, but it generally works throughout the different types of cookware you're using. I have a carbon steel cold handle skillet here, and I have a Pathfinder stainless steel skillet here. So we're gonna talk through these, and we're gonna compare them on a list with different criteria and look at the advantages and disadvantages of all of them because there's none of them that don't have advantages over the other in some way. And there's none of them that don't have disadvantages compared to the others in some way. So when you're picking a cookware that you're going to use, you need to bear all these things in mind when you choose what you're going to buy or purchase. Now, I use all three types. I've got videos using everything from cast iron to cold handle skillets to stainless steel going back 12 or 13 years. I've been using a lot of this stuff for a lot longer than that even before I started shooting videos and things like that for YouTube. So what I want you to understand is that some of the stuff that I'm speaking to you about, I'm speaking to you from a lot of experience cooking in the outdoors, carrying cookware in the outdoors, packing cookware in the outdoors, and cooking different types of meals in the outdoors, in actual environments that are not so close to home necessarily, but out on the trail, like in the Daniel Boone National Forest, on you know a five, six, seven day trek in 18th century gear and things like that. And I've cooked in all different types of cookware. So I can speak pretty readily to what I think the advantages are, but I also want to talk about technically what the true advantages and disadvantages are of some of this stuff, all right? So let's start off with cast iron. I've got this six inch field company cast iron skillet. This would be what I would consider like a personal skillet, okay? If you're gonna carry it to cook your personal food in, not a group camp or anything like that, just a small size skillet. So with cast iron, you have the weight and the packability is your first concern. This thing weighs a ton compared to other cookware. The packability of it, meaning that it weighs a lot, is not really a concern if it's small like this necessarily, okay? The bulk and weight is your concern. So I would give that a low rating as far as weight and packability goes. Durability. Cast iron is a very durable material. However, it's also brittle in that if you drop it on a hard surface like a rock or something like that, especially in colder weather, you can crack it. I can't tell you how many of these cast iron skillets and Dutch ovens, things like that, I've seen in antique malls that had a weld, weld on them where they'd been broken and had to be welded back together. So they are somewhat fragile, but they're pretty heavy duty. You're not going to just break one of these things without doing something pretty tragic to it. So I would give them for durability, I would say the durability is pretty high, all right? Heat transfer and heat retention is very good with cast iron. You transfer heat fairly evenly and it will retain heat fairly well because of the thermal mass of that cast iron. So I would say that is also high. Cooking versatility. Now, most people would say that cast iron has great cooking versatility. And as far as being able to use a Dutch oven to cook lots of different things, I would agree with that. As far as cast iron having high versatility, there are some things I would disagree with that on. Acidic food can transfer taste from a cast iron skillet, from things you've cooked before in the seasoning to the food you're cooking. Simmering and boiling in cast iron can also corrode or remove that seasoning from the skillet itself over time. So as far as you know, the cooking versatility goes, I would say at best that's medium. And I say medium on this one because compared to another material that's high, it's not as good, all right? Corrosion resistance. Obviously, everyone knows that this stuff's going to rust if you don't take care of it. If you set it outside even overnight, it's going to rust if it's not well seasoned all the way around and well cleaned and taken care of and greased or oiled before it's left outside. We have lots of cast iron cookware out here at the school 
and we have to maintain it constantly because it rusts very, very quickly. So the corrosion resistance of this, I would say is low, okay? Cleanup. If you have a well-seasoned cast iron skillet, it cleans up fairly well. However, you don't have as much versatility to clean cast iron because you don't want to remove the seasoning. So you're basically going to boil in it, wipe it out, possibly use some salt in there as an abrasive, as an abrasive uh, substance to get food and gunk off. And then you're going to wipe it out and oil it down. But if it's really, really nasty, or it's been sitting for three or four days before you cleaned it, because you went off hunting or something and came back and you didn't clean up from breakfast, it's going to be very difficult to clean. And it's not something you can just haphazardly scrub the crap out of because you're going to remove the seasoning. So I would say that cleanup on that is a medium at best. And I said, again, I say that as compared to something else that's much easier to clean. Okay, now let's talk about carbon steel. And when we're talking about carbon steel, we're gonna talk about these cold handle style skillets although there are lots of carbon steel skillets that are much thicker than these are. But the most common thing that people carry and pack around with them in camps is these carbon steel cold handle style skillets. And I've been using these things for 20 years probably. I used them when I was doing reenacting. I used to cut the handles off of them, put hinges on them and make folding skillets out of them that had ferrules on them you could put a stick in. There were lots and lots of ways that these things were used and I used them in lots of reenactments. However, I've used them a lot since then as well. I've had them in videos. I have sell them on Etsy. I collect them myself. I have probably 40 of them in my personal collection. So I'm a fan of the cold handle skillet. However, it does have some distinct disadvantages as well when it comes to something that you want to pack with you when you are going on a trek or a camp and you don't have conveyance and things like that. So let's talk about this skillet real quick. Weight and packability is definitely high in the fact that it doesn't weigh very much. However, it's also medium in the fact that the handle doesn't fold. So it takes up twice the amount of room it needs to take up in a pack because of that handle, all right? So I'll give it, I'll give it a high because of the weight, because they are very lightweight. Now, if you get to a thicker skillet, the weight is gonna change that high to a medium at best. But for a cold handle, I'd say they're pretty packable because they don't weigh much, even though they take up some extra room in your pack. Durability. I'm gonna put low on that, and I'll tell you why. I buy a ton of these skillets, okay? And I pass on a lot of these skillets. This folded sheath that goes over the top to make it a cold handle, which is just a stamping that's wrapped around and crimped, tends to get loose. It tends to get bent. The handles tend to bend on these skillets. You could bend this. If I took this in my hand right now, I wanted to ruin this skillet. I could bend this skillet right now and bend the handle straight down on it with my bare hands. So if I drop weight on this thing or I have it in my pack and I squash it or crush it or sit on it or drop it on something, or it's laying in camp and I drop a log on it, I can damage the skillet fairly easily. I can bend the skillet itself and I can definitely bend the handle. I've seen many, many of these that are cracked right where the handle connection is because they've been bent and bent back. So I would say that the durability of this thing for what we're talking about going out and rough packing our stuff is low. Heat transfer and retention. Carbon steel holds heat fairly well. The thinner it is, the less retention it's gonna have. The thinner it is, the worse it's gonna be at overall transfer and you're gonna get hot spots, which is the advantage you have a cast iron a lot of times that you don't have with thinner skillets. And these cold handle skillets are very, very thin in gauge, okay? So I would give the heat transfer retention a medium at best on that, all right? Cooking versatility, I would give that a medium as well, all right? Again, these type skillets have to be seasoned. So you have the same disadvantage you have with cast iron in that acidic foods can transfer taste from the seasoning and boiling and simmering in these things can eat away at the seasoning over time. So there are some distinct disadvantages there as well. All right, for cooking versatility, I would give this thing a medium for the same reason as the cast iron. It has to be seasoned, all right? And one of the other big problems you have with these skillets that goes back to kind of the durability is 
a big majority of skillets that you find, the bottoms are bent or warped on them because they've been overheated. And with this thin gauge carbon steel, that's easy to do on a campfire situation. Not so much if you're cooking in your home with something like this where you've got a controlled heat source. But on a campfire, it's easy to warp this carbon steel. So you have to be cognizant of that as well. All right, for cleanup, I would give it a medium as well for the same reason as the cast iron. It's got seasoning on it that I have to be cognizant of when I'm cleaning it up. So it's not like I can take a Brillo pad and get after this thing or a green scrub pad and get after this thing. If I've got some gunk in here that's been in here for a while, it's going to be a pain to clean out. I'm going to have to boil water in here. I'm going to have to use a scrub brush or some salt or something that's abrasive in here that's not going to scratch the seasoning off of it to clean it up. So again, I'd say medium at best on that. Now, let's go to stainless steel, all right? Remember that 90% of restaurants in the world, professional restaurants, use stainless steel. And a lot of them use stainless steel mainly for the durability and the cleanup of stainless steel. So we'll talk about that in a minute, all right? Weight and packability. Yes, it weighs more than this, but because the handle folds underneath it, it's also much more packable in your backpack. So I would say the packability of something like this is really high. Okay, durability. Stainless steel is a very, very durable material. That's why it's used in restaurants. You could take this stainless steel skillet right here and you could probably park a Jeep on top of this thing and not bend this skillet. You can drop it, you can throw it. It can fall down, it can have stuff put on top of it. It can have weight stacked on top of it. You're not gonna hurt this skillet because the handle folds underneath and this is heavy gauge stainless steel with a double thickness on the bottom for extra heat transfer so that you don't get hot spots in the bottom of the skillet, which is one of the downfalls of a single wall stainless steel skillet, unless it's a clad skillet, which we're not talking about that right now. We're talking about just stainless steel skillets, okay? So on this one, definitely the durability is high. Heat transfer and retention. Stainless steel does retain heat very, very well. Heat transfer is what becomes the problem of getting hot spots. And that's why this one has a double thickness on the bottom to alleviate that problem. So I'll give it out a medium. Cooking versatility. Again, no seasoning required. If I cook an acidic food in here, it's no problem. If I boil or simmer in here, it's no problem. If I braise in here, it's no problem. I have no chance of removing seasoning because I don't have to worry about seasoning this material. So, high. Corrosion resistance, again, stainless steel, right? It's got chromium, not going to rust, not going to corrode. I shouldn't say it'll never rust. If you left the thing laying outside for a year, probably gonna have some rust on it. But compared to, definitely high. And then the last one is cleanup. And again, no seasoning, right? Doesn't matter if I use sand, dirt, leaves, a scrub pad, SOS, detergent, salt. It doesn't matter what I use to clean this up with. It's going to clean up and be nice when I'm done with it. And it's going to be sanitary when I'm done with it, as long as I take the proper precautions. So definitely high when it comes to cleanup. So now when you look at this list, all right, the disadvantages of stainless steel are really one thing on our list. Everything else is high, right? So you have one, two highs here, one high here, one, two, three, four, five highs there, okay? <clears throat> that tells me what I need to know when it comes to what I'm gonna carry in the woods for a backpacking trip, for a hunting camp, for a few days out in the bush. If I'm not trying to be traditional, and I'm not trying to reenact or anything, and I don't have to use this carbon steel stuff because it's period correct, then I'm going to choose stainless steel, which is why all of our cookware is made from stainless steel. All right, all right so I think this is a pretty objective list. And I think I was pretty objective with the way I went through these categories with you guys. If you disagree, don't be afraid to say so for sure. A lot of people are going to defend this cast iron. 
And I'll tell you what, I'm a fan of cast iron too. However, when it comes to mobility and overall durability where I don't really have to pay attention to it, and that's the thing, you know, the, the big difference between these three materials is there's only one of these that I don't really have to pay attention to. No matter how gunky or nasty it gets, no matter how long I leave it set before I get to it to clean it, it is take it to the creek, throw it in the sand, scrub the crap out of it, throw it over the fire and dry it out, and it's good as new. With these other materials, you've got to get to them fairly immediately after you cook to clean them up, or you're going to have a problem cleaning them, or they're going to corrode if they're not taken care of very well. And that in and of itself, along with the fact that I can fold this handle up and pack it in my pack easier, is a big thing to sway my vote towards stainless steel. And part of the reason that all my cookware is made from stainless steel. The durability, the cleanup, all of that stuff has way more advantages than most of this other material. So listen, guys, I appreciate you joining for this video today. I thank you for everything you do for our school, for our family, for our business, all our sponsors, instructors, affiliates, and friends. I hope this video helped you make some decisions. And again, there's no wrong decision. It's really what works for you. But there are distinct advantages and disadvantages to each of these materials, and you should understand that before you buy. So listen, guys, again, I appreciate you joining for this video today, and I'll be back with another one as soon as I can. Thanks, guys.